What's going on out there, world? Terry Tyler here. I'm here to educate you motherfuckers on something that's important. It's called financial fitness. If you're like me, you're buying shit you don't need. You're doing things with your money that you don't necessarily want to do, and you're fucked up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over this program. This program is called Financial Fitness Exercises to Shape Up Your Spending. This is actually Mississippi State University material that I'm presenting to you in this particular manner and fashion. What we're going to do is we're going to go over your numbers. You know, if you go to your doctor, you're going to want to ask him about your cholesterol numbers. If you go to your mechanic, you're going to want to know, hey, man, my fucking car is running hot. How are my numbers, you know, looking? So in this case, we're going to look at your numbers. We're going to get you squared away. So grab yourself a fucking pen and pencil and sit down because we're going to have a good time. Financial advisors also encourage you to know your numbers and look for money management problems that might need your attention. Do an annual checkup to take charge of your financial health by answering the following questions. Do you spend less than you earn? Do you spend no more than 15 to 20 percent of your monthly income for credit payments, including car payments, credit cards, and all other debts, not including your house payment or mortgage? Do you have an emergency savings fund to cover at least three months of your living expenses. If you answered yes to all of the above questions, then your finances should be in great shape. But if you answered no to any of these questions or are unsure, you may need to complete a few money management exercises to shape up your spending. Let's do a checkup. Okay. Your first exercise is to identify all the income that's coming in the house for the month. You, if you've got a lot of people living in your house that are bringing in money, things can get a little funky. So you may want to list those things separately. But if you can all come together as a big team, that's great. But the first step is identify all sources of income. Now what we're talking about is your take home, your net income. The net income after taxes, I'm talking about dollar per dollar, cent per cent. If you're picking up a fucking quarter that's in the gas station parking lot, or if you're bumming $20 from your Uncle Sam, go ahead and write that down. If you're not writing it down, then how in the fuck do you know where it's going? If you're that smart upstairs, that's fine. But if you're not, write that shit down. The next step is gonna be list your debts. Go ahead and write down all the debts you have. The dope man, the light man, the water man. Everybody that you owe, go ahead and write that down. Now you're also going to want to make sure that you total these monthly payments and divide that number by your total monthly income. What we're going to do is we're going to give you a formulation method right here and I'm going to get off of this screen and show you the equation that you need to take to get yourself on the right track. Write down all of your debts, car payments, credit cards, all loans except the house. Total these numbers up. Now go ahead and list all sources of income and resources you have to pay your expenses for one month. Divide these two numbers together. If the answer is more than 0 0.20 or 20 percent, it is time to start finding ways to lower your debt load. If debt seems to be a problem for you, learn how to get out of debt. Most families simply cannot afford a debt ratio of 0.15 to 0.20. All right, everybody, time for section three. This is probably one of the most important sections 
in this webinar. This section is about tracking your expenses. Now, expenses are what take out of your income. You basically have cash flow and you have expenses. So income, outcome, it's pretty simple. But we're gonna break it down into something a little more complex. You have your regular fixed expenses. Your fixed expenses are gonna be things like your house payment, your rent, and regular you know, structured credit card payments that you have to make every month. Like my phone bill, for example, it's 43 bucks. You know, I know this is going to cost the same amount of money every single month. So that is an example of a fixed expense. Those are a lot more easier to manage. Now, flexible expenses, they're a little more tricky. Flexible expenses are things like your power bill, your water bill, your uh, gasoline prices, food prices. These are flexible. They may vary month to month. Your income may be constant, but these can vary. They can put you in a bind in a real quick. So you want to record how much you spend for a whole month on average on these flexible expenses. And I recommend adding, you know, depending on what you have, a two to $300 margin just for safety. Because in flexible expenses, you could have a tire blow. You could have a child get sick. Those are things that could roll over into that, that flexible budget. Now, the next one I wanna talk about is your daily expenses. Write down every single thing you spend for an entire week on manby-pamby bullshit. These are expenses you don't need, like your coffee, your beer, your cigarettes. If you use drugs, your drugs, uh, clothes, um, eating out at the steakhouse, you know, going to the movies. Well, these things may be pleasurable and they may give you rewards. They are completely unnecessary and they can be a real eye opener when you look at them. You want to write down everything, track these purchases and be sure to in, uh, include these every month in your actual monthly living expenses. All right, guys, let's go on to exercise four. We're calculating periodic expenses. Now, periodic expenses are expenses that you pay for only once or twice a year. Um, these things can cause budget problems if you don't take care of them. Think through a normal year and make a list of the things you might need to buy for each month. Have you remembered to include things like gifts, school clothes, dues, subscriptions, season ticket, tickets, your taxes, your insurance, your car tags, uh, you know, license, vacations, holidays, and special occasions like birthdays, you know, Christmas, weddings, graduations, and baby showers. All these things that occur on certain dates are called periodic expenses, and they need to be charted because they really add up. What repairs, health emergencies, and health care expenses might you expect? Um, unexpected expenses aren't really surprises, but because they aren't regular monthly payments, you might not be ready for them when they come up. So we want you to plan these expenses so they don't surprise you. Now, let's be reasonable. Wouldn't you expect maybe a trip or two to the doctor over the course of a year? Maybe a blown head gasket on the car? Uh, you know, what if you have children? What if your kids get sick? You may have to take days off of work. You know, they may need medicine. Will your aging car or home need repairs? 
your toilet stops up, your tires are getting bald, you got to get a new set of tires. And what about your appliances or your tools? If you're a workman and your, your power drill goes out, your saw goes out, you know, sometimes your tools are going to experience wear and tear. Your clothing may become torn up. You know, these, these, these are periodic expenses that you need to, to look at because they, they've got to be seen to. You know, otherwise, over time, they're, they're going to begin to wear out and they will need to be replaced. So, what I want you guys to do, and girls, is add up all these periodic expenses to get an annual total and divide by 12. This is the amount you'll need to save every month to cover the annual periodic expenses. Not already included in your monthly living expenses. So here is the equation of how to do that. And I'm going to tell you one thing that a man told me, uh, a wise man told me, when I was working for the Three Rivers program, he told me that money doesn't buy happiness, but it does buy security. And how you take care of your money is, is really going to depend on how secure you are moving into the future. Uh, a lot of people don't see money like it, like it should be seen. And, and those people are in grave danger. So go ahead and use these techniques and I hope they can help you. All right, crew, we're on to the fifth exercise. This is comparing your income with your expenses. Now, to compare your income with your expenses, if you are spending less than you earn, you should have some excess money to save for a rainy day and for future goals. Good for you. If you find you're spending more than you earn, you only have two logical choices. One, reduce the expenses, or two, bolster or increase your income. It may be hard to find ways to spend less or earn more money, but your financial health depends on it. One way to control excess spending on flexible expenses that seem to get out of hand is uh, use a cash basis envelope method. You will need several plain envelopes. On each envelope, write the name of a category like food, pleasure, personal allowance, or gifts. In each envelope, put the amount of cash you can afford to spend on that category. When the envelope is empty, it's time to stop spending. This can be a very enjoyable and rewarding exercise that makes you feel like a kid again. I always like to consider it paying yourself. You know, people pay everybody else, but they don't forget to pay themselves. Take the time to pay yourself once in a while. And, and don't be ashamed. If you buy my book, uh, Facing the Storm on Limited Motivation, I, I go in there. Uh, sometimes you've got to treat yourself good. So put that in the budget. You know, it doesn't have to be just crack the whip. Put, put, put that down, but include it in your budget. Keep an envelope for every, uh, everything you need. All right. Now that you have a good idea of how much your income and expenses have been in the past, you are ready to create a future spending plan. Use the monthly living expenses worksheet to make choices about how much you will spend on each month in the coming months. Which flexible expenses can you lower or cut out? Don't forget to include savings for periodic annual expenses 
and for the emergencies that may appear in your plan. See exercise six. Make sure to balance your budget by spending less than you earn. We will discuss that in the equation here. This is the equation to uh, balance this budget. You'll want your total monthly income minus your total monthly living expenses equals. And this will be your surplus or deficit income, also known as expendable income. Now, don't, don't treat it as expendable. You may save it or use it to invest in your business. My philosophy is you want to take that money and you want to make that money work for you. I invest, try to invest in tools and invest in the dream. If you have a dream, it's the time to invest in the dream that's going to get you ahead. Otherwise, you may be falling behind. All right, team, we're down to exercise six. Comparing expenses to savings. Now, financially healthy families have an emergency savings account with enough money to cover at least three months of living expenses. Unfortunately, many families are just one paycheck away from homelessness, bankruptcy, or starvation. They don't have any savings. How does your savings account compare to your total monthly living expenses? If you don't have any savings, start with the amount you need to cover periodic expenses each month. Then begin saving for true emergencies until you have enough to cover your living expenses for three months. Now, I know that may seem daunting to some of you guys, but, you know, it can be done with some creativity and some motherfucking discipline. If you're not going to discipline yourself and you're not going to sacrifice some of the shit that you enjoy now for the nest egg in the future, then, you know, you, you, you may not be ready to take some of these suggestions. So let's, let's get on a good foot, people. Here's the equation that you need. Calculate by getting your monthly living expenses multiply times three and this will equal the savings needed for your emergency fund. Now, let's review the financial fitness exercises that we discussed through this seminar. One, identifying income. Two, listing your debts. Three, tracking your monthly expenses. Four, calculating your periodic expenses. Five, comparing income to expenses. And six, compare expenses to savings. Now, Working to complete these exercises and, and can be hard work. And making this video has been hard work. It's, it challenges you to think in a new way of, uh, of mathematics and, and physical things. And it's, it can be a fucking headache. But it's what you got to do if you're going to pull yourself up. So much like a treadmill test and a physical exam, it's not something you might want to do every day. But going through these exercises at least once or twice a year can help you see the areas that you need to work on. It can also get you better at managing your expenses. It's good for your kids. It's good for your government. It's good for everybody. You just got to fucking do it. Uh, what you don't know can hurt you. And you can take that to the bank. Hidden financial health problems usually continue to get worse until you take action. If you have found that you have problem areas, then it's time to step up your spending by reducing 
unnecessary expenses, plugging in, spending leaks, and starting a savings plan for your healthy future. Now, guys, I don't know if I can put this document that you can download below, but I'm gonna try to affix a document to download below as part of my YouTube quest to become a better YouTuber and an auspice for you motherfuckers. But we're going to give you guys some and gals and transgenders and uh, aliens, uh, whoever the fuck you are, we're gonna give you some sheets that are going to uh, help you out. Just print these sheets off, go through them. You know, if you don't like fucking going through the motions, just go through the motions, man. Just do it. Otherwise, you're a lazy cunt. You ain't no good. Peace.